Hi guys, <laughs> this is Tracy Morrow. I am taking a little break, a little holiday, just a day off. I think I need one, <laughs> but I didn't want to leave and not give you guys something to do on a Saturday afternoon. I thought this would be fun. It's a simple one. Yeah, it's going to be a super easy project for you guys to do. Um, it's not really involved, but it is super cute and it is a lot of fun to do. So we are going to be painting Baking Spirits Bright. Uh, this is a really cute uh, project. I love these little uh, breadboards. I think they're adorable. And I think they make such cute little ornaments. Uh, this is actually about five by eight. So five, five inches across by eight inches long. The surface is available from Sheila Landry at tollpaintingdesigns.com. Uh, we also have them available on the website. Uh, for you. So uh, don't forget to use your coupon codes if you've got them. Um, especially my membership group or uh, my Canadian friends, you know what your discounts are. So don't be afraid to use those. So here we go. We've got Baking Spirits Bright. And here is uh, the rundown. So our base coat for this piece is uh, Lamp Black. You know what? In hindsight, I think if you used a Prussian blue in the background, it'd be very, very nice too. Um, or even a, a really dark green, um, like a black forest green, something like that would look really nice in the background too. So uh, just choose a nice dark color. Um, a dark red would look great, a dark green would look great, a dark blue would look great. Any one of those colors can function just fine. Uh, this one I did in lamp black, but as I said, in hindsight, I think I would have done maybe some Prussian blue. Uh, so here we go. The base coat, two coats, lamp black in the background. Super easy, sand in between so that you get a nice smooth finish. The lettering is just based out with warm white. I just used the, the number two rigger for this. Don't worry about getting this one neat and tidy. This is supposed to look very childlike and, and simplistic. So as long as it's clean, straight and level, that's all that really matters. Don't worry about whether or not it's fully opaque because we're going to put color over top of this. So we have warm white for that lettering. The little gingerbread down here, or as we like to call him, Bob, is based with red spice, which is that new color from Decor. Nope, that's not it. But this is, this is the new color, red spice. Um, it's one of the new colors in the Decor lineup. I love this color. I, uh, heads up though, it's very transparent, so make sure that you put something underneath it because this one is, is going to take three or four coats otherwise, especially over that black. Uh, the buttons and the eyes on this little guy are done with the lamp black. The leaves on the holly are based with another new deck work color. It's this one, lush green. This one is quickly becoming a favorite of mine. I really like this color. It's a great green for a variety of things. So that is the base coat for your holly leaves. For the berries on the holly, um, I used my, my typical, I used my country red. That's my go-to red for so many Christmas and festive pieces. But I put a coat of warm white on the ber berries first. I find that if I don't have that lighter value underneath those berries, uh, they tend to get very sort of lost, especially on dark backgrounds. You just don't get the brightness, that lushness. So a coat of warm white on those berries first, and then a coat of country red, and then you get these nice bright red berries. And then from there, you're ready to go. So we're going to start um, by putting a little shading on our little gingerbread, on Bob. So I'm gonna grab an angled shader. I'm thinking of three eighths. So I've got a black gold or, or a faux squirrel. Let me, let's do the faux squirrel today. So I've got a nice little 3 8 angle shader in the Dynasty faux squirrel. Let me get that good and wet. But I'm going to pick up a little bit of my glazing medium, that faux Josanya's glaze. I don't want this color full strength, but I'm shading with a little bit of a schwalten. It's this is my go-to, especially on browns. I love this color. So I'm going to put a little float on the right side of each of those little buttons. And I'm going to do the same thing 
on the eyeballs. Just want a little shadow on the right side. I'm going to bring this in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to take a little of that asphalt and I'm going to float up against the icing on his arm. So right here, I like this little float, just kind of gives a little bit of a cast shadow to those things. And we'll dry that real quick. This is a super, super easy project. Lots of fun though, lots of fun. So I'm going to, I'm gonna grab a little bit of uh, Warm Sunset, which is this nice orange tone. It's gonna be my highlight color for my gingerbread. I'm going to use a little bit of that. And again, I'm blending it out quite well because I don't want this color full strength. And I'm going to put a little highlight on the side of his head, right here. I do like this color. And I'm going to put a little on the front part of his hand right there. And down here. Now the edges of our cookie right in here and underneath this arm are just based with a little asphaltum. And I want that float a little bit brighter, so let it dry and then I'm just going to go over it one more time. There we go. Simple highlight. You don't want it to come screaming off of there, so just a simple one. Now for the highlight on those eyeballs, of course I'm going to use a little bit of warm white. That's my go-to white. Um, I just like it. It works well with so many different things. But you're going to use it in a very small quantity and you're going to blend this out well because we're working on black. So we're going to put a little float of warm white on the eyeball. And as I said, you don't want this color full strength. And I'm going to do the same thing to each of those buttons. And I come in just a little from the edge. Just helps give them a little more shape. And then grab a little bit of Bahama Blue. We want to put a little bit of shadow on our icing. But I don't want it to be brown. So I'm using a little bit of Bahama Blue. If you don't have Bahama Blue, you can use Crystal Blue for this. I'll turn this upside down. So it's on the shaded side. So a little, little tiny float of that blue on our icing. It's just to give it a little, little depth. Super easy. So for the, see how easy he is? He comes together so quickly. So let me grab my um, fine liner. We're going to put a little dot on each eye and each button just to give him a little more dimension. And that dot's going to go on the upper left There we go, like so, of each button, right on the edge of that highlight. Super easy. And this little guy will come together very, very quickly. So we need um, a small round or a small rigger. I'm going to use, I think this is, I'm going to use my, oh, that's a two, I want something smaller. Oh, there's a zero, okay. So, 
I'm going to use a, a number zero rigger and thin out a little bit of warm white. He needs some icing on the top of his head. So I'm going to do that with a little comma stroke like so. And I like, you know, three little strokes on there. That's his, his hair, so to speak. I'll dry it. I am going to throw some snowflakes in here at some point. You know me, I'm not going to go anywhere without snowflakes. I do love my snowflakes. So, make sure that's dry before we tackle the next step. So, I'm going to take a little Ashfalton and I want to put a little shadow right there on my icing just to give him a little shape. And I want to come over here and put a float of Eshfalton just on the edge, like so. It's a weak float, you don't need to overdo it. It's just to age the edge a little bit. Look how cute he is. Now, some people like him without the mouth. I think he's kind of cute without it. Um, but if you wanted to put a mouth on him, a little heart in there would be super cute uh, or a heart anywhere on him would be super cute but that's entirely up to you I personally like him just the way he is so my shading color for this uh, piece for those holly leaves is my usual go-to I always seem to default to that plantation pine The other green that I like to use quite frequently is the uh, sap green in the fluid acrylics. That's a particular favorite for me. I just love that it's so transparent. It's also that it's very, very dark, uh, but it, it's a nice green. So we're going to start on these holly leaves with a float at the base of all of these leaves. Sort of a U-shaped float so that the darker value stays towards the bottom of the leaf where it joins stem or where it would join the stem. Now I've got everything all over the place here. There we go. So I'm going to come over here to the bottom of my leaf. So as I said, just a U shape, just so that it covers the bottom of that leaf. It's a soft float, don't really have to putz with it much. We're just going to give these leaves a little curve at the base, like so. So it's not a super dark float. And we're going to come over here to these ones. Now the trick when you're doing something like this is to find the, the right sized brush for, this, for the area you're working in. This 3 8 uh, works very well for this size of a project because it'll fit into quite comfortably into most of the spaces that you need to get those floats into. I see people trying to float with larger brushes in these little tiny spaces and they're only using a portion of it. It's much easier to use a brush that's appropriate to this space. And in this case, 3 8 works perfectly. Um, a quarter inch would work fine too, but the little three eighths is working perfectly. So plantation pine at the base, it's just going to put in a small shadow at the base of each of those leaves. All it does really is just give you the impression that this leaf is curving. Gives a little extra dimension little extra shape and a little interest it doesn't look quite so flat come around here there we go and I like to give it a couple of coats just to make sure I've got nice deep floats there we go lovely so I'm going to dry that and then we'll float down the center vein of each leaf to give them a nice little curve. 
I very rarely put a straight line in the center of the leaf. It just looks a little wrong. So we're going to come down the center leaf. Let me get this right in the middle of the shot so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see that I've created a curve right to the point of the leaf. So now we've got shape and depth. We've got a little bit of depth in there. We're going to do the same thing to these leaves up here at the top. There's a little shape. If your brush feels like it's dragging, go and grab some more. Just touch the top of the water basin or pick up just a touch of glazing medium. Just enough to pull the, the liquid, give you a little bit of float. There we go. So the color that I chose to highlight all of these leaves with is called Sprout. It's also in the new color list. I've developed a penchant for this particular color. I do love it. It's almost a chartreuse. Almost. Um, it has a, a very high yellow content, but it is a lovely green, and it works very, very well on that lush. Um, it is a very strong color, so again, we're using it in very small quantities, and we're blending it out well. So, angled shader, and I'm treating it the same way I treat uh, the shading colors. You're going to blend them out well. I would rather do things in two or three floats and then have control than to try to get it all done in one go. So that highlight color is going to go down the center vein opposite the shadow. And it gives us a nice pop, but we're also going to take that color out onto the edge of that leaf right there, out to the point. And look at that. Easy holly. Points down the center vein. Look how pretty. This is a lovely green for this. I used to use margarita and olive green quite frequently for this. Um, and they still work beautifully, but I, whenever the new colors come out, I have to try them and see how well they work. This one um, it's a little on the transparent side, but it's got a little bit of white in it, so it makes it such an easy color to control for highlighting. And it, with a second layer, it gets a little bit brighter each time, which is really, really nice. So there's your highlight. A little heavy-handed, but that's okay. So look at that. We get these nice, delicate highlights on those leaves. Very pretty. I love that. And we'll come over here. Put our highlight on here. Love this color. The sprout is, I think it's a very functional highlighting color and works particularly well on that lush green. I think it's because of that high high yellow content and then the transparency of it is nice. So that little bit of white just makes all the difference. Look at how pretty those leaves are. We're going to make this pop even more by deepening our shadows. It's just this way we have all kinds of control. So there's that point. Take it out to the point. Super easy. I just, and I love painting for Christmas. How, how fun. And this one is not a difficult piece. Didn't really want to do anything too strenuous. But it, I still needed to be cute. And I think this would be so sweet hanging in the kitchen. Especially when you bake it. 
So there is our highlight color on there. That sprout is just a wonderful green for highlighting our holly. Now I'm going to come back to the plantation pine for just a second. And I'm going to pick up a little of that. And we're going to deepen the floats down the center vein just a little. All this does is just crisps up those leaves a little bit, gives us a nice sharp definition down the center vein, and it makes those highlights pop. Putting that little bit of definition down the center just makes all the difference in how that shading. That's the key. Sometimes when you're shading something or highlighting something and you just can't get it any brighter, it just won't go as bright as you want it to, stop trying to mess with the highlight and deepen your shading. It will help create a bit more contrast and it makes those highlights appear a little bit brighter. So look at that. So we've got really nice highlight on all of those leaves. Nice little center vein shadings. So we've got great curvature in the leaves. Looks really pretty. So now we have to think about these berries. So we're going to use, um, I was trying to think outside the box. Ordinarily when I do berries, I either use Prussian blue or I use uh, soft black or I mix a, a red whatnot. I decided to try something different. So this time around, we're gonna use this new color. This is purple iris. This is just such a lush purple. It's a little bit lighter than Diox, um, and it has a really nice pop to it. So let's have a look, see what we can do with that. And if we don't like it, we can choose another color. It's just paint. So you, just so you know, um, I have not written the pattern at the time of filling. <laughs> so I'm essentially just designing as I go here. So I've got a little bit of that purple iris on my brush. Ooh, I'm liking it already. Um, I just over blended it, took a little too much color out. I'm going to float my berries along the bottom like so. Just a, a sliver of the base color at the edge. A sliver, tiny, tiny amount. Love the purple. This purple is very transparent. It seems to be working really nicely. And then I'm going to show you something because I've had this in my head for a while. We need to use an orange or a yellow to highlight these berries. I really want them to pop off of here. So I'm going to use an orange or a yellow for that. This one, I think it'll work really nicely with this purple. So there's that shadow of purple on the underside of our berries. And then I'm going to dry it. I'm going to give it one more float just to deepen it a little because I don't think it's quite dark enough. But I do like how it's giving me a nice rich tone on these berries, which is what I wanted. And then I'm going to grab my angle, a little more of that purple, just to deepen these a little bit. Oh yeah, there we go. That is what I wanted right there. And again, I'm just leaving a sliver on the edge. Yes, that's what I wanted right there. So essentially, as I'm painting this and we're talking, or I'm talking and you're listening, or whatever, um, I have not written the pattern yet. So I haven't cho chosen all of my color palette yet. So you're kind of watching my design process at the same time. So uh, for me, the, the greens were a no-brainer, choosing that lush green for the base color and then using that sprout for the highlight. That was a bit of a no-brainer for me. The same with the cookie. I, I really am loving that red spice tone, that gorgeous sort of a bricky uh, brick color. I kind of like that. Uh, and I think it works really well for our little cookie down here. 
So I'm really loving that, but I've been wanting to figure out a way to use this purple iris and I decided to, to shade the reds with it and I'm very pleased with that. I, I like that it gives it a little bit of richness and I love that it's giving those berries such a nice shape. But I really, really want to make a pop on that orange on those berries. So I'm thinking, um, how about, so let's try Orange Flame. Oh no, they've got this new color, Tiger Lily. Let's try that. I think the Tiger Lily will work really, really nicely. I love these new colors. I'm loving that they have such uh, vibrancy. And the fact that a lot of them are transparent for me is a big plus. So let's have a look. This is Tiger Lily. Nope. Well, maybe. It's not a huge change. I'm not seeing a real change in the... No, I don't think so. Mm, a little bit. Let's go to our, my usual, my orange flame, and let's see. See, these are quite a, quite far apart. This one has got much more yellow in it, uh, but it might be what I need. And I don't want to go to a really flat orange. I want to stick to a, a bright orange. So let's have a look, see what we get. Yeah, I like that much better. And again, I just leave a little sliver of the base color showing through. Yeah, I like this better. So, orange flame it is. That's my highlight color for those berries, is orange flame. You could also use, you know, I'm thinking that, um, that sunset gold. I'm curious. Let's have a look. Nope. Too muddy. <laughs> I can tell the minute it hit the surface. Nope, that's not going to work. So we're going to go with the orange flame because I really like how it makes those berries look not garish, but it heats them up, gives them some warmth, gives them nice shape. Lovely. And it's not an over-the-top highlight. I don't really go for over-the-top. But I love that these berries look so round and lush. And we are going to use a small light impact point of uh, warm white just to give them a little sheen. But I like that the orange. That orange worked much better. And again, my highlight color, that little dot, is going to go to the right on the edge of that float, of that highlight float. And tiny. We don't want a great big gob of color on there. So pretty. I love the little dots. It just makes everything come to life. It's like putting eyes on things. The minute you put the eyes on, it, it comes to life. And that's so much better. So cute. So our next thing is to do all of those little vines and tendrils on that holly vine. I, I torture myself doing these things, but I love it. So I'm going to thin out a little bit of that sprout green, that highlight color that we used. I'm going to thin that out with little Joe Sonia's. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white. I want that green, but I need a little more opacity than it'll give me on that black. So I'm going to add a little bit of warm white to it. And it's going to make it a little bit brighter. And this is my little vine. And this is what connects all of our holly leaves. There we go. And I like that little bit of brighter green. I, it's just, it's very soft and it's very pretty.
and it makes a world of difference when you're connecting all of these waves. Now, I like the softness that that creates. It's not a harsh, hard line, and it's very fluid, and it works very well going around those, that design. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. That's one nice thing about that Joe Sonia's medium is that it is very forgiving and it helps let that paint flow. So when you're doing all of these fine lines and tendrils, whatnot, it, it does help immensely to get those lines nice and smooth and fluid. So I'm going to my little curly cues. I do love curly cues. So while you have your brush loaded, this is one of my favorites. I like doing this. I rather like this loose little line at the edges of things. It just softens the leaves. And it's a super easy technique. You don't need to have a ton of color in your brush. If it runs out, that's okay too. But it does a, a couple of things. It outlines and defines those leaves a little bit. And it also adds sort of a filler to things. That's why I don't worry about it being perfectly on the edge of the leaf. It really doesn't matter. And it's just a thin, fine line. So it gives everything a nice soft feeling. Kind of airy. And I like the definition, but it, it's soft and it's delicate. You can add a little curly cue to the end of your leaves if you want to. And it's super easy. So it's very light and sketchy. I do the same thing in a lot of things using pens or what have you, but. On uh, this, I kind of like having the green at the edges. It just softens everything out nicely. I'm going to do the same thing down here. And again, I don't worry about whether or not they're perfect. Neatness doesn't count. And I like this. I like that little flourish at the end. One of the nice things about using these super fine liners, they're ideal for this type of thing. You don't need to have a ton of color in your brush. And it does flow off quite nicely. So there we go. Oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So I'm going to rinse out that liner and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about this lettering. I am kind of partial to um, all sorts of things. I like the gingerbread look. I like the um, the candy cane look, you know, putting little bars of reds in. But it gets very busy on a surface this small where the design is very compressed. So I want to avoid using too much. And so I'm just going to... Um, keep this looking almost as if it was drawn on with chalk. I kind of like that idea. Um, but I'm going to use another one of those new colors. Now, you can use Bahama Blue for this part. Um, I'm going to use this Crystal Blue, which is that same blue that we used on the icing. And we'll see if this works. It might be too light. Yeah, it is too light. So, let's 
So, I'm going to go grab my Bahama Blue. Sometimes it's just a little too late. Now, there is not a huge difference in value between uh, this Crystal Blue and the Bahama Blue, but it's enough. It's actually about one value. And the Bahama Blue is a little more green, just a touch. So I want to put just a little bit of color at the base of each of these letters. Just a little bit. And then I'm just using the chisel edge of the brush to put it in there because it's a tight spot. <laughs> it might not be a good idea. So I'm going to take a little bit of thin warm white. I'm not happy with that. I don't like it. I'm just going to put a little bit of thin warm white right over top of all of that Bahama blue. Just wasn't cutting it for me. So what do we do? What do we do? So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm just going to use a little bit of a Schwalton back there. Oh, or maybe let's go with that Prussian blue after all. Now the reason I'm saying Prussian blue is because now I'm thinking we can make this work really nicely. Blend it out really well. Let's let's have a look. Let's see. Let's see. Yes, madam, I'm liking it. So I'm just putting a float of Prussian blue. Look at that. Oh, I love it. And I'm coming about halfway up the letter. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That did it. I needed something there. I suppose you could do it from the top too, but I kind of like the bottom. So I've just blended out some Prussian blue. The other thing I like is it's not showing up on the black background. That I do like a lot. There we are. I knew the solution was there somewhere. So a little bit of blue. Love it. And about halfway up. Let it fade out as it goes. That's why I like the darker value at the bottom and let it fade out going up. So you get to see how my mind works for better or for worse. So this is just a fun way, fun little, fast little, easy peasy little project that you could do with the kids or do with yourself. This is not a hard one. This would be so cute, uh, just, just done on white, trace out the line drawing, trace it on with a black marker and let the kids go to it with crayons or with, uh, with markers. I think it would be a super cute way to do um, ornaments with the kids. So we have Making Spirits, Baking Spirits Bright. We need something for the edge. I did paint my edges this time around. I don't usually. But I did this time. Um, but I am going to use some some um, gold on the edges. But I want to dry this really well and then clean up some of the graphite. And uh, I have to put a couple of stencils on here. It's just me, and I'm thinking it's just going to be one or two snowflakes, just because I can. And I do like my snowflakes. I just think they fill in space really nicely. I don't want to overdo it because there's a lot going on in this little one. I'm going to pull back a little bit. There we go. I'm going to grab a snowflake stencil. I think I'll grab my favorite snowflake stencil. So this one is my favorite. M254, I believe it is. This is my favorite. I love this one because of this, this, this lacy little doodad right here. It's one of my favorite snowflakes. And so I'm going to use that one 
in here, but I'm going to use it sparingly. I don't want to overdo. So I'm thinking it needs a little bit right there. Grab a stencil brush and a little bit of warm white. I don't need a ton of color for this. Um, the brush could be almost dry for this, as a matter of fact. There we go. Pretty, pretty. I am a fan of snowflakes. And we'll do another one over here. I just think this is fun. Just a few. And don't be afraid to put it right over your design. That's all right. It can go off the page, but if it goes onto your design, that's all right too. And they don't have to be opaque. You can make them as dry and transparent as you want, or as fully opaque as you want. That's entirely up to you. See, so kind of like it like that. And I do have some little small ones in here that I think I'm going to tuck a couple in, like so, just because I can. It's Christmas stuff. You can put a snowflakes on it if you want to. Or not. That's entirely up to you. If you don't want to, please don't feel that you have to. I'm liking it. I do like the snowflakes. I'm a fan. And I wanted... Oh, nice. So, I think... I think I'm good. I think I'm good. I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going to dry it. Look how cute. Lots of stuff going on in this one. But super easy. So I think that's dry enough. I'm going to grab my Texas Black or my Tombow Black. Either one will do the trick for what I need to do today which is just to remove a few graphite lines. So I like the black ones because they don't chew up your surface. They don't chew up your paint. So it's super easy to get that graphite off and then you end up with a nice pretty piece. And your berries look like berries and your gingerbread cookies look like gingerbread cookies. And your lettering looks nice and clean and not messy awesome that's why I like that black eraser the Tombow one the to little black Tombow is awesome too it's nice soft it doesn't gouge your surface it's wonderful on paper because it doesn't chew the paper up and it's fabulous on black surfaces because it doesn't make it shiny oh I love it love it love it love it so cute and of course, see, I have to spatter it because, you know, it's me and I love spatter. I like spattering things. I just find it makes, it makes old things look older and new things look fun. So there we go. Oh, love it. Got all my graphite off. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. He's super cute. How cute. So I'm going to grab my, where is my fugly brush? I got my little fugly brush. I like this one for um, a whole bunch of things, but this one is great for spattering. So I want to use, I'm thinking a little bit of warm white for this, just because I can I grab a little bit of glaze. So I'm just gonna thin out a little bit of warm white and you know, the toothbrush method is tried and true for me. I find I have control. Oh, and there we go. We have Merry and Bright. A super easy project. This one is fun to do. I love this surface. I have a couple of designs for um, Day of the Dead that are coming on this surface too. I have two different varieties of this. We have one with the hole and one without. I love both of them. Um, one just hangs with ribbon through this, obviously. Others can be tied or you can use a different type of hanger on it. 
but um, I, either way, I think that this surface is freaking adorable. So here it is, Baking Spirits Bright. I hope you enjoy it. If you're looking for the surface, you can find them on tracymoreau.net. You can also find them on tollpaintingdesigns.com from Sheila Landry. They are a wonderful little surface, inexpensive, and they make such a cute little Christmas ornament. Um, I do want to finish the edges on this a little bit. And this is my favorite go-to for doing the edges. I love this, this gold paint pen. This is, to me, just the easiest way to put a decorative edge on something, and it's just that simple. Just go around the edge, like so. You can have a little bead of gold showing on the front if you want, or not. Depends on how much pressure you put on it. But it makes such a pretty finish on these ornaments decorations for the holidays and it finishes up that edge nicely so once you've got it on the edge then you can just take the paint pen and finish out the edges like so super easy way to give them a really nice professional look look at that so they get this really nice gold finish on the front now to finish out the back you could do whatever you want you could add it to and from uh, the year. You could personalize them if you want to. That's, again, entirely up to you. I do like to finish the back. Um, I've got black paint on here, and I'll probably just do a little chalkboard to and from on the back. And it will be good to go. So, all you need to do these edges, to give you that nice gold finish on these edges, is these decal color gold paint pens. I, they're my favorite um, for a couple of reasons. One, they work really well. Two, they're inexpensive. They're, they don't cost the earth. Um, I've seen some that go as high as $20 a pen. These ones I think retail around seven or eight dollars and they're fantastic and they last forever. So you're going to love these Deco Color Premium paint pens. I just love these ones. They're from Mar Marvi Ushida. Great pen. And there you have it. That is our Baking Spirits Bright. Fun little ornament. I thought you'd enjoy it. So while I'm off enjoying my day off, I hope that you are sitting in your studio enjoying your time with your brushes. I will see you next Saturday at the same time as usual at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time live on my YouTube channel at Tracy Morrow Design or live at Tracy Morrow Live on Facebook. I will see you again soon. In the meantime, please stay safe.